All right. So, hello, hello. Copic in the craft room fans. Michelle Houghton here. I am coloring up another Ann Corbier Scott design. These are um, full sheet pages of digital art. All you have to do is pull them up and print them. They come out on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. You end up with three images. This one is her Mama Wiltastic, um, Wilk Tastic, and it's kind of a cherry blossom type image. What I love about cherry blossoms is they are crazy easy to do in Copic ink. So we're going to do this and it'll be super, super fast. Um, and I'm just going to do the single one and then I'm thinking about doing it on kind of an inky background. So um, it really is only going to take three markers and maybe four. Four. I'm trying to remember kind of what the centers are. Looks like I'm looking at some reference photos. We've got some yellows in the interior, but most cherry blossoms have this very, very delicate pink look to them. So that is what I'm going to go for. And then I'll add some of that brighter yellow that might work really well for that um, vibrant kind of yellow orange on the center so a couple ways you could do this you could work actually from dark to light and it'll be even faster if you would like I'm gonna start with an R8 actually yeah let's do this R83 this is gonna be at the center of the flower and it's gonna come out. It'll come out a little bit further in the center of each petal. And then R81 is gonna start on the darker R83, come further out, almost to the edge. And then Colorless Blender is gonna come from the edge back in. It's going to soften those edges and just kind of melt it. And you can push that back as far as you want. Now, the other option, and I'll show you if I do it in the reverse order, not really reverse, but if I start with my lighter, R81, forgot to enlarge a little bit for you guys. There we go. R81. So take this one all the way kind of out. And then come back with my R83. You can kind of decide if you'd like to leave some of that kind of flicking or vein work, you could come in and just finish with those edges with the colorless blender. And you don't necessarily have to blend it smoothly. So it's a pretty subtle difference, but you can kind of decide which you like. For this, for petals, I actually tend to like a little more texture. So I would guess you can do about half of this flower and then the other half. So I'm gonna finish off kind of this half. Now the petals to the back might end up being slightly darker. So that second row that are underlying the others might end up being a little bit darker so you can kind of take that into consideration as you are coloring and I think I'll do that's a good amount R83 
So on these back ones, that R83 is just going to come further up and out. Now you can make the choice. Remember to spin this as you need to for your hand. You can make the choice, um, add some of that vein work back in. Sorry, I keep interrupting myself. If you want, on some of those back pedals, you can go even darker. So you could bring in like an R85 and tack that into those little areas that are tucked truly behind the flower petals, kind of right in that depth. That's going to add that layer effect so that it really looks like it's sitting behind. And that's only going to go on those truly back petals. Oh my goodness. Today has been an interesting day. I feel like as the year goes on, I lose my mind a little more each day. softening up those edges just a little bit. And if you got to the point where you felt like, eh, this is way too much texture, it is super easy to go back to the R81, do a little more right on top, and I can still see it, it's just softened. So you definitely don't have to leave it so distinct. It's really gonna be up to you how much of that you want to leave showing. Artistic license. And you could all, you could pull out completely different colors. You could pull out um, some RVs for this instead. Um, I chose this particular little set, the R8s, because I know that First of all, the R81 fades to white really, really well. I know that from using it multiple times doing that. Um, and that these blend really, really well together so that I know I can do kind of color right on top and get that really nice softening effect without a whole lot of work and leave some of that texture. Um, but you could absolutely experiment with some RVs and get a similar effect. I have not played as much with red violets. Um, and so I don't know which ones would have that really nice kind of softening effect. Obviously ones that are in natural blending groups would tend to be better at it. But I think if you've played around with Copics quite a bit, you'll know even in natural blending groups, there's ones that are, that play nicer together than others and blend more easily together. So experiment around with it. If you find good ones, just kind of make note of that so you can use them again when you have the opportunity to. So coming in again to these back ones and bringing those darker colors that R83 out further and then R85 right down into that crease to push that in a little bit further. Hit these one more time too. Now what's another way you could do that? You could add a really subtle hint of some blue violets. And that would work really, really well. So I'm going to go back to my R81. Just barely soften some of those little texture spots. There we go. And then I'll grab my colorless blender and hit the edges. I'm 
But this is one of those where you can see it. Copic coloring does not have to be this all consuming, agoni <laughs> agonizing event. Um, I absolutely have images where I will spend huge amounts of time on kind of not agonizing, but I enjoy the press process. So thinking through my color options, thinking through kind of mapping things out, looking up um, kind of my reference images and seeing how close I can get to a more realistic looking flower or animal. Um, so I can spend quite a bit of time if I want, but you don't have to. Probably should have used something a little bit lighter, but I'm okay. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow right into the center though. And it's right on top of my other, but it's going to warm that up. I feel like there's all this little kind of fun frilliness in the center there. Oh yeah, that's doing it. Yay. Okay. So the yellows I used were a YR15. Sorry. I'll double check that to make sure we didn't go too far off. YR15 and a Y11. So I think what I'm going to do is create kind of an inky, um, maybe green or pink um, background that then this can pop up and sit on top of. And I'm not sure. I might use one of the sentiments that is included. But I'll attach a photo of that finished look here at the end. Fast easy and fun. I hope you enjoy and find one of these images from Anne Corbier Scott Designs and color your own. Very fun. Have a happy colorful day everybody. A quick peek at the background that I created. I misted some just glossy paper. This happens just to be photo paper with Copic Colorless Blender. Then I'm just dripping um, a few colors of Copic Various ink or the refill ink onto that wet um, paper. Because it is that glossy paper, it does not absorb right away. So you'll see as I start twisting the paper around, the ink moves a lot. So any glossy paper is going to work with this. You can blow it with um, like a hair dryer or a heat gun. It will dry or you can just blow on it um, and that way it doesn't dry quite as fast. I came back with another color, kind of a contrast color, this pink that I wanted to add so that the touch of those flowers. The idea was kind of a mottled background that you were seeing a blurry background between the trees. Have a happy, colorful day, everybody.